good day everyone today is a second lecture on introduction to drones today's lecture talks about the types and subtypes of drone the lecture focuses on different types of drone it is important to know about these different types because it will help in deciding on what drone to use for the application required this will also give an idea about deciding the drone based on size and range let's start by looking at the type of drones the drones are basically of two types fixed wing drone and rotary drone the first type of drones are fixed wing drones fixed fixed wing drones as opposed to rotary wing are uh, use a wing like normal aeroplane to provide the lift rather than vertical lift rotors because of this they only need to use energy to move forward not hold themselves up in the air so as much are much more efficient fixed wings fly using a rigid structure which helps generate lift under their wings due to forward air speed produced by either an electric motor controlled propeller or an internal engine they move forward on their set course or as set by the guide control possibly a remote unit operated by a human as long as their energy source permits most fixed wing drones have an average flying time of a couple of hours gas engine powered drones can fly up to 16 hours or higher owing to their higher flying time and fuel efficiency fixed wing drones are ideal for long distance operations be it mapping or surveillance but they cannot be used for aerial photography where the drone needs to be kept still on the air for a period of time it's not easy to put a fixed wing drone in the air you either need a runway or a catapult launcher to set a fixed wing drone on its course in the air a runway or a parachute or a net is again necessary to land them back in ground safely the other downsides of fixed wing drones are higher costs and skill training required in flying another consideration of a fixed wing drone is that it is much more about the data with fixed wing the flight is just the beginning you have captured the images but it isn't yet the data the clients are looking for multi rotor drones are the most common types of drones which are used by professionals and hobbyists alike they are used for most common applications like aerial photography aerial video surveillance etc multi rotors have come to now be used for various purposes such as drone delivery security personal transportation and various other purposes they are the easiest and the cheapest option for getting an eye in the sky and because they give you such a great control over position and framing multi rotor drones come in a lot of different shapes and sizes with lots of different rotor counts as a general rule of thumb as you go up in the rotors the drone gets bigger and more expensive although easy to manufacture and relatively cheap multi rotor drones have many downsides the prominent ones being its limited flying time limited endurance and speed they are not suitable for large scale projects like long distance aerial mapping or surveillance the fundamental problem with the multi copters is that they have to spend a huge portion of their energy possibly from a battery source just to fight gravity and stabilize themselves in the air at present most of the multi rotor drones out there are capable of only a 20 to 30 minutes flight time often with a minimal payload like a camera multi rotors are further classified into bicopter tricopter and many more based on the number of propellers according to the size of the drone whether they are nano size medium or large according to the range of the drone based on long endurance or short endurance and finally hybrid drones which are a hybrid of multi rotor and fixed wing drones this classification is very important to keep in mind because depending on the requirement of the mission the type and sub type of drone will be selected therefore it is very important to know the different sub types the pros cons and what qualifies 
that particular type for the machine. The first classification is based on the number of propellers. The first subtype is single rotor drones. Single rotor drones look very similar in design and structure to actual helicopters. Unlike a multi-rotor drone, a single rotor model has just one big sized rotor plus a small sized one on the tail of, of the drone to control its heading. Single rotor drones are much efficient than multi-rotor versions. They have higher flying times and can, can even be powered by gas engines. In aerodynamics, the lower the count of rotors, the lesser will be the spin of the object. And that's the big reason why quadcopters are more stable than octocopters. In that sense, single rotor drones are much efficient than multi-rotor drones. However, these machines come with much higher complexity and operational risks. Their costs are also on the higher side. The larger size rotor blades often pose a risk Coatal injuries have been recorded from RC copter accidents if the drone is mishandled or involved in an accident. Multi-rotor drones, often owing to the small rotor blade, have been involved in fetal accidents, though a scar on the human body is likely. They also demand special training to fly them on air properly, though they may not need a runway or a catapult launcher to put them on air. The second type of a subtype is bicopter drones. The bicopter consists of two propellers attached in the configuration as shown on the slide. The benefits of the bicopter drone is a higher battery life as compared to other types, greater portability of the drone, and reduction in noise due to lesser number of propellers. However, the disadvantage of the bicopter are unbalanced effect on thrust of on both sides of the drone since both the sides of the drone respond differently in or across the arm direction. Both the propellers require much more space and dimensions and the airflow through the propellers are through the arms, thus reducing the efficiency of the propellers. These are the pros and cons of using a bicopter. The next type is a tricopter. There are three different types of powerful motors inside a tricopter three controllers, four gyros, and only one servo. The motors are simply placed at every extreme end of three arms, and each one of these is a holding a location sensor. Whenever you need a lift, whenever you need to lift your tricopter, it is essential to initiate a movement in throttle lever. The gyro sensor will immediately receive its signal and will pass it directly to the controller that helps to control motor rotation. A tricopter is able to stay stabilized on its path as it is equipped with so many classic sensors. Tri-rotor drones are able to be flown in a way that closely mirrors the flight of a fixed-wing aircraft. That is, they can make bank turns, rapid forward flight, and accelerate or decelerate in a way that is very intuitive. In a tri-rotor drone, the orientation is easily apparent at even greater great distances. Why is this important? If you are inspecting a wind turbine blade that costs over $150,000, knowing the orientation of your drone with absolute certainty is paramount. Flying forward when you mean to fly backward would be a very costly mistake. The copter suffers from lower performance and don't, they don't scale well to the larger size. The current slide talks about a quadcopter drone. Quadcopters generally have two rotors, spinning clockwise and two counterclockwise. Flight control is provided by independent variation of the speed, and hence lift and torque of each rotor. Pitch and roll are controlled by varying the net center of thrust, with Y controlled by varying the net torque. Quadcopters are the most common drones and can be found in any size from small toys to sophisticated entry-level models, professional used quadcopters. Thanks to their four rotors, quadcopters are strong enough to carry a smaller payload, such as camera, but never too heavy to lose acceleration and maneuver maneuverability. The later qualifies them especially for the use in so-called FPV races, 
where speed and agility is required. We will be talking a lot more about quadcopters during the entire course. A source of battery for such devices used to be a lithium or polymer battery. The next drone that we will be looking at are hexacopter. While a quadcopter is equipped with two rotors and an octocopter with eight propellers and motors, the hexacopter is characterized by its six rotor arms. The six rotor system not only provides a more stable flight and more power, but is also an important safety feature. Another advantage of a hexacopter is quite light characteristics. Thanks to the six rotor system, the copter stands stable in the air and can reliably be controlled even at high wind speeds. Compared to most quadcopters, a hexacopter is not only quieter, but also more powerful more precisely controllable and has a higher payload. If a motor or a propeller is damaged, a hexacopter is able to fly and land safely even with five rotors. The hexacopter has much more wind resistance and can carry larger payloads. However, one of the major disadvantages of hexacopter is the reduced endurance. Also, it is difficult to control and cannot be flown in narrow spaces. As the name suggests, this is the drone designed with which features eight propellers. Naturally, it is a far more powerful machine than either the quadcopter or the hexacopter. It can fly higher, move faster, and carry heavier payloads than other drones. The octocopter also remains very stable while in the air and can record footage with high quality visuals and very little shaking. Because of its high performance value, octocopters are considered the cream of the crop when it comes to drones. They are used for highly specialized missions, which can put them in the path of rain or strong winds. The strength of the machine allows it to brave harsh weather conditions without getting thrown off course. If two or even three of the propellers get damaged, the drone still keeps flying. Since the device is very large, it lies between in your house. Also, greater care needs to be taken while transporting the drone in your car or truck to make sure it doesn't get damaged. Since a lot of power is consumed by the octocopter, it cannot stay in the air for too long without needing to come back down to get recharged. If you are thinking of using the octocopter, it would be a good idea to keep extra batteries handy in case the drone runs off of power before the work is complete. This completes our discussion on the classification of drone based on the number of propellers. Next, we will be classifying drones based on the size of the drone. The current classification discusses drones based on the size of the drones. Based on a thumb rule in the industry, the smaller the size of the drone, the shorter the range of the mission, the question quicker the mission is carried out, and the more complex the mechanism and payload of the drone. To iterate the smaller drone, the, uh, the smaller the drone, the complex the drone. The larger the drone, the heavier the drone. Therefore, usually mid-sized drones are preferred for operations. Very small drones can be designed with a common size range varying from a large size insect to a 50 centimeter long unit. Nano drones are widely used due to their tiny structure and lightweight construction as they work like essential weapons for spine. Many drones have a size above 50 centimeters and a maximum of 2 meters in dimension. Many sized drones usually carry payloads such as camera or compact payloads due to their size. Medium sized drones weigh up to a maximum of 200 kgs. These are heavy lift drones meant for applications such as personal transportation or equipment delivery or agricultural purposes. The large drones are somewhat comparable to the size of an aircraft and are most commonly used for military applications. Lives that cannot be covered with normal jets are usually captured with, captured with these drones. They are the main device for surveillance applications. The current classification discusses drones based on the range of a drone. Very close range drones are able to fly up to 5 kilometers 
with a flight time of 20 to 45 minutes when equipped with battery. Close range drones are able to fly up to 50 kilometers with a battery backup of one to six hours, as they can work for longer durations and cover far distances so they can define their application in surveillance missions. Short range drones are able to travel up to a maximum distance of 150 kilometers. That means coverage is almost 100 kilometers more than that of a closed range drones. The estimated flight time for short range drones is eight to 12 hours. So they are useful for reconnaissance and spy applications. Mid range drones are very well known as high speed drones that can cover area up to 650 kilometers. Mid range drones are commonly used for surveillance applications and the basic type under this category work for meteorological data collection needs. Endurance drones have impressive flight time of 36 hours and can go up to a maximum height of 3000 feet above sea level easily. These drones are popular for high end surveillance applications. FPV or first person view drones may be remotely controlled or may be programmed to fly autonomously through software controlled flight plans accessing data from onboard sensors and GPS. From the user's perspective, an FPV drone is like, a fly, is like flying a telepresence robot, enabling virtual presence wherever the device can fly, often in an environment that a human could not physically access safely. In contrast to humans, personal drones can access smaller spaces and tolerate harsher environments in addition to having the ability to fly. Hybrid VTOLs are hybrid versions combining the benefits of fixed wing models, higher flying time with that of rotor based models. Hybrid VTOLs are a play of automation and manual gliding. A vertical lift is used to lift the drone up into the air on the ground. Gyros and accelerometers work in automated mode, autopilot concept to keep the drone stabilized in the air. Remote based or even programmed manual control is used to guide the drone on the desired course. There are only a handful of hybrid fixed wing aircraft currently on the market, but you can expect this to be a much more popular option in the upcoming years as the technology is perfected. One example getting a lot of attention is Amazon's Prime Air Delivery Drone. We looked at the first two types of drones, which are fixed wing and rotary drones. We further then classified rotary drones based on the number of propellers, size of the rotary drone, and range of the drone. We also looked at a type of rotary drone, which is an FPV drone. Finally, we looked at hybrid drones, which is a combination of both rotary and fixed wing drone. It is very important to keep these things in mind, especially while deciding which drone to be used for different application. The next lecture talks about the past, present and future about drones. Thank you very much.